Hi, Ropers. Continuing my series of uh, short how-tos for uh, adding different types of things on the bottom of your rope bowls. Today, I'm going to show you how I add these doilies. Um, they always are different because they're most of them are handmade. They're different sizes. So they have to be 10 inches or smaller if you're actually looking for them. 10 inches is about as big as you can really get make a bowl, proper bowl with. So today we're going I'm going to show you my way of putting of adding these to the bottom of a bowl. <clears throat> We will be using the Walmart rope. Let's see. Here you go. The Hyper Tough. It runs about $8 for the 100 feet, and it makes a, a firm bowl. So I, I do prefer to use this for, for these types of bowls. And my fabric. I'll show you what it looks like. This is for the strips. I'll be um, wrapping a little bit of the bowl. And uh, here's, here's what they look like cut. It'll be interesting to see how, how it works out. And since this particular doily, I tried it on the, bowl, the uh, rope first, and uh, it just didn't pop. Because the rope is, unless maybe you have a colored rope or you dye your rope, um, it gives you an idea. It just doesn't look that good. So I've decided to put a fabric base on the bowl, on the on the uh, base of the bowl. This uh, is about uh, eight inches. Yeah. Yeah, this doily was eight inches, so I'm making an eight inch base of the bowl. So what I do is I uh, cut the fabric out, attach it with some glue stick to the base of the bowl, and just so it doesn't move around. I also, uh, when I do my uh, fabric, I always put some interfacing Lightweight interfacing because it stabilizes the fabric better. It gives, gives it a little more uh, heftiness to it and uh, stability, actually. And uh, I think you could probably use even spray starch. I've never done spray starch, but I may try that one time. That might also, if you don't have interfacing, maybe a little spray starch might work to, to uh, uh, make the fabric a little more stable. And then we're going to add the uh, doily to the top of that. And you see how much better that looks? Just something about the color behind it. This is a very pale blue uh, vintage doily I have here. So, uh, so those are the ingredients for today's bowl. Let me get this stuff out of the way. <clears throat> okay. So now what I like to do is um, uh, use the glue stick to just attach the doily to the fabric here, just so it doesn't move around on me. It doesn't require a lot, just a little tack. Just helps. Uh, for, for so it doesn't move on you. You know how sometimes when you're sewing things can can move a little bit. So here we go. <clears throat> so here we are. So that's what it would look like. And so the first thing I'm going to do before I continue on with the with the bowl itself is uh, I'm going to tack the edges down. I always start on the outside with a doily. Uh, I pull it, I've pressed this doily with steam, with a steam iron too. So it's uh, fully stretched out. 
and uh, I think this is cotton, feels like cotton. And uh, so I'm, go I'm gonna show you what I do. I just tack it a little bit here and there so it just stays in place to start with. So I'm using my 1976 Kenmore, a rescued machine. Love it, love the way it stitches. Has no problem with the bowls. It doesn't have a zillion fancy stitches on it. It just is pretty basic, but that's all we need for rope bowls. So what I do is I put a few zigzags. Let me see where I'm set at. I think I have it on a four. And for these little tackies, I think I'll put it on a 10 for the length. Okay, let me get my rope out of the what's under my presser foot here. There we go. So let me see if I can get a decent camera for you guys. I'll move the machine over here a little. How's that? Might be a little better. Yeah. Let's see. Does that look good? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I don't like attacking it there. I'm going to move it up, down this way a little more. And I'm just going to go around the... Uh, I usually start with my needle down. And just take the edges and just a little tack... Uh, a little back tack. This is just to hold it in place before we do anything permanent. Go a little further. Little tacks. Okay, I'm not, don't want to take up too much time doing this. Don't like to make very long. Um, videos for YouTube. They take a long time to upload if they're too long and people get tired of watching them too. So here we go. Gee, whoops. It would help if I did this properly. Here we go. And a few more tacks. And I'm not taking the time to trim the threads off. Tacks. Let's see. How many more do we need? I don't think we need that many. This is not a, a science. Uh, just do what makes you comfortable. And take your time and do it neater than I'm doing it. <clears throat> okay, so that will hold it in place. That will hold the doily in place. And then I turn it over and uh, trim off as much of the fabric. Be careful of your doily. Trim off as much of the fabric as you think you can t take off. It only requires a tiny little bit because it just is supposed to be between the rope. Does that make sense? Because you actually do not want it to show on the bottom of your bowl if at all possible. It takes a while to learn this, what, it, what actually works. It's like a practice thing. And uh, some of my earlier bowls, it showed a little on the bottom, but it doesn't really affect the bowl. We're always trying to improve our... Uh, abilities on these on these things so okay that's good a little bit here I don't like that okay so mm -hmm. I have to cut these off anyway 
So what I'm going to do now is make one more round, one more go around with the rope before I start building the sides of the bowl. Well, I'm not going to build the sides of the bowl until I go back and attack some more. But first I want to get this one, one thing done here. Now working with these vintage doilies can be a little tricky because they're uh, being handmade. They're not uh, symmetric or perfect. So you kind of have to like uh, deal with that a little bit. But as you see, if you catch it in on this go around, it's perfectly fine. It's not going to affect it. In fact, it will stabilize it more. Now, if I wasn't on camera, I would be taking my time be a little more uh, perfect about this, but we'll see how this goes. I just want to give you an idea of the different things you can do. I have a series of these little how-tos videos. Whatever you can think of to put in a bottom of the bowl, I'm sure there's, there is a way to do it. So sometimes it requires thinking outside the box a little, but that's being creative. So here we go. I seem to be, let me see here. I'm missing a lot of my stitches. So I'm trying to work around the camera. Maybe someday I'll get a proper setup. I'm just using an old cell phone on a uh, thing that I kind of just set up here. I think it was supposed to be for a microphone at one time. But this is just an old phone. It does pretty good for for videos. I really can't complain about it. Am I in the camera? Yeah. I keep forgetting to look at the camera to make sure we're... The last video I made, I was half out of the camera. And I usually go around a second time. I think I'm going to make my stitch a little longer. Yeah. I'm going to go around this second time. Sometimes you have to like push your little uh, doily in. do is just let me see where did we start yeah I'll turn around snip some of these off okay now what I like to do is I like to go back in this is a pretty thick uh, cotton doily so I have to like lift my presser foot up it's a little extra go around <clears throat> and starting in the center here well you could start on the outside and go in but I'm going to do the center part here first and I'm going to stitch it around I haven't really got the right color thread like a, just the light blue I'm using up what I have on here but um, it might be interesting let's see what it looks like Give it a give it a go. Mm -hmm. 
can always take it out. Not something I want to do, but it's, you know, nothing is permanent. Okay. I think I'll make the stitch a little tighter, a little shorter length. Let's see what happens. It's a lot of uh, playing around and experimenting. With what your style is, what makes you comfortable. Okay. Not bad. Make sure you don't stitch over your excess rope. Stitch. There we go. Okay. So you just kind of continue along doing that here. And, uh, th this is how I do it. Uh, just tacking it down here and there. I got to move that one down. Okay. Okay. And this is pretty thick here. So what, what I would do is I would just tack in maybe here. I'm not going to overdo the tacking on this. just want to give you the idea. Like each one of these little petals. In my opinion, that would be enough to hold the bowl. Now, you could just continue around doing that. I'm not going to continue around. It's very time-consuming. I don't want to bore you guys. Then, whoop. Then, we can just continue. Okay, forgetting this is so thick. Needle down. There we go. Now I like my bowls to have straight sides, as straight as possible. So I push my my base up as tight as I can, and I push my rope in, and uh, that seems to work for me. Now this machine, you know, has a fairly let's see here good size nose, but it still gives me a pretty, as long as you have a big base, it gives me a pretty straight-sided bowl. So, let's go here. Am I in the thing? In the camera? There we go. I'm just going to start making my sides. I'm not going to do the whole thing. I just want to give you an idea of how you can put a doily in the bottom of one of your rope bowls. And think about using the colored uh, uh, fabric underneath. Now, I'll finish this off camera and make a second video of the finished finished project. So, don't forget to come back and look at the second video. Okay, see you in a bit. Bye.